Hey, I'm Aubrey from Aubrey Originals. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a fun, patriotic clothespin wreath. I'll share all my tips and a couple things I'd wish I'd done differently so that you can make this as easily as possible. If you haven't already, please hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss out on anything fun coming up. You're going to need a wire wreath form. I like the 14 inch wreath forms from Dollar Tree. And while you're there, pick up a bunch of clothespins. You'll need five packs and you'll have some left over too. You'll need spray paint in red, white, and blue. I prefer non-glossy spray paint, so either satin or matte. And holy cow, I had a tough time finding the colors I wanted in stock when I was doing this. I ended up really liking the Rust-Oleum brand, but unfortunately they only had the red, so I also had to use a Krylon Fusion, which was just okay. The white kind of sucked, if I'm being honest. You'll also need hot glue, some sort of stars for decoration. They can be wood shapes that you paint or buttons. I ended up using a pack of star buttons from Walmart. And you need twine or ribbon for a hanger. And then if you want to make a bow, you'll also need wired ribbon and a Chanel stem. Step one, paint the clothespins. Clothespins are kind of tricky to paint. There's probably not any one way that's best. In my blog post, you'll see pictures of how I did it the first time by hanging the clothespins on a string between two trees in my yard. This time I clipped them to the edges of cardboard boxes and that worked pretty well for the most part. Just do lots of thin coats, waiting at least a few minutes in between each coat. So don't do what I do because I'm a super impatient spray painter. Also, I tend to get too close, so don't do that either. If you're struggling to get the inside of the clothespins, you can kind of twist them like this and then spray paint from each side. You could also separate them completely, but then you have to put them back together and that's kind of a pain, so I don't really recommend that. Near the end, I used a spare wreath form to clip the clothespins onto and spray painted them on that, and this was probably the easiest way of all. Just hold it in one hand and spray paint with the other, rotating as you go to get paint in all the small areas. Step two, assemble the wreath. Once all the clothespins are dry, you are ready to assemble the wreath. I like doing two layers of clothespins, clipping the top layer onto the first two wire rings. The bottom layer, which you'll want to do first, will get clipped onto only the most outer wire ring, which makes it kind of wobbly, but I'll show you later how to deal with that. For these bottom clothespins, the wire should sit right in that little hole on the clothespin. For this patriotic flag design, fill up two sections of the wreath form with blue. Each outer section fits 15 clothespins, by the way. Next, we're going to alternate white and red clothespins, and because each section fits 15, I did seven white, eight red, then eight white and seven red in the next section, and so on. So, you can see now how floppy this bottom layer is, which is not my favorite. So we're going to hot glue over the top of the clothespins. I'm clipping a couple top layer clothespins on so you can see where we need to glue so that it doesn't show from the front. And that's going to be right on the tips of the clothespins in between the wire rings. When you're doing this, make sure you have something underneath your wreath to protect your work surface, just in case glue leaks through, though I didn't have a problem with that this time. Also, an important thing to keep in mind is that you still need to fit the top layer of clothespins on, so don't let your glue build up any higher than the wreath form. I totally didn't think about that and got a little too heavy handed with the glue. Once the glue is dry, you can clean up the strings and then assemble the top layer of clothespins. For this layer, you can fit 12 clothespins in each section, so six white and six red for those sections. Next, hot glue your stars back and forth in the blue section and feel free to add more or less than I did. Step three, make a wreath hanger. Before making a bow, let's make the wreath hanger. I simply used a piece of twine, threaded it around the outer two rings of the wreath form, and you might need needle nose pliers to pull it through. Then give yourself a few inches. I probably could have made the loop a little bigger here. Tie a double knot, pull the knot to the back of the wreath, and hot glue it down to make it extra secure. Step four, make a bow. For the bow, I'm using two and a half inch wired ribbon and I'll link below to my favorite place to buy ribbon. You can eye this, but it's roughly 10 inches for the first tail and pinch, another 10 inches and pinch to make a loop, then twist your ribbon so it's facing forward and do another loop. And you can see each time I make a loop, I'm alternating left and right sides of the bow, so they're always going across where you pinch them together. Repeat the pinching and twisting to make two more loops and then gather them all in the middle and twist the end of the ribbon down to make that second tail. 
you can trim the end now or after. Grab your Chanel stem. I should have used a full length Chanel stem, but I think this was a half. And wrap it around the middle of the bow and twist a few times at the back. Dovetail the ends of the bow by folding in half and cutting diagonally. Next, take a three inch scrap of ribbon, fold it in roughly thirds lengthwise and hot glue it. Then wrap this around the middle of the bow, making sure the Chanel stem ends are flat on either side. And hot glue the ribbon piece. You can tuck the last part under once so it's clean and you don't have any fraying ends. Stick the Chanel stem pieces through the wreath form and twist around the wire at the back to secure the ribbon. You can see my half length Chanel stem barely made it here. You could also use hot glue if you need to. And there you go, your wreath is all finished. So fun and patriotic, but perfect year round as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.